Dominion. Hey, Dominion. especially people who were sort of on the line, who were like somewhat politically engaged, had an idea of what was going on, but maybe weren't sort of pushed towards action, um, are definitely engaging, um, I would say in a more sort of substantive way, uh, really doing things rather than just learning about them. I think the biggest threat to all of this would have to be, I think honestly, like the momentum, one thing that is really hard, especially, you know, as college students, I can speak for, I can speak for myself and a lot of people here on this campus is we're very, very busy. And so you get to a point where you have to prioritize the things that are important to you and what you feel the need to do in your life. and. For, for minorities, obviously acting on this is at the top of this list, but for people who are not affected by it, for white people, it's, it's not a priority, and I feel like continuously having to force it up to the top of that list is gonna be something that's honestly very hard. Um, you've got schoolwork, you've got career, life moves coming up, you've got a ton of things going on, and you wanna act on things that are also important to you, and just, finding a way to keep it at the top of that priority list, not just for a week or for a month or even a semester, but for years and throughout your life is something that I feel like is a very big threat to this movement and keeping up, like keeping it going. And people always talk about we gotta educate people, but then they're like, go to Google. And I'm like, that's a very facetious response and I laugh at it, but at the same time, you have to tell people what to type. And I know, I remember a time not that long ago, before, like, even while I was at this university, where I wouldn't have known what to type. And this is me as a person of color, marginalized in a variety of ways in the society. So I can only imagine for a major person in the majority, that is even harder to conceptualize. And so I thought that this, and we thought that this, um, this night tonight would be a good time, not only for that education piece to happen, but then also for that follow-up after. And so that's why with the questions, uh, not only wanting to process and help people kind of, uh, articulate their feelings in a way, um, in a structured way, but then also, what are the next steps? Like, what do you want to see? Because um, far too often we, we lament and then we don't call to action. And I think the lack of relationships is what was, what was the problem. Um, that we just fundamentally didn't understand each other as a nation. But I think now is absolutely the time to bridge the gap and it'll be hard and uncomfortable. But I think if we don't, then it will quickly settle back into this divided country where we have little tiny bursts of activism within our bubbles, but nothing, nothing big enough or sustainable enough uh, to really make a change. I hope that people still kind of have that inside them that they know they need to do something about it and not just like kind of go through the stages of like okay this happened there's not a whole lot we can do because there's a ton we can do and a ton that we do need to do for change to actually happen. So last week I work at a student coffee house on campus and so I organized a bunch of events there that were just sort of supposed to be a safe um, space where people could process. Um, but one of the things I've been struggling with is that people showed up, which was great. Um, 
but now I need them to do more than just process. Um, and so one of the questions I've been asking myself is sort of where, where does this lead? Where should we be running towards? I feel as though if I took these people and said, you know, come with me, let's do something, they would. Um, I just don't quite know what the something is. And so I think that's something a lot of us, especially white allies in particular, are struggling with right now. Because um, I know where my voice shouldn't be heard. Um, and I know that I need to be like amplifying the voices of people um, who are most marginalized by a Trump presidency and by the bigotry that we're facing. Uh, but I'm not sure exactly where I fit. Um, and I think that that is a struggle that a lot of us are facing. Surround yourself with people who think differently, who have different walks of life. And I think that'll increase your openness and it'll increase your, your desire to help these communities and, and be a part of all the activism that's going on. Ask for money from the school. Like, ask a department to fund you or find people who care about it and they'll fund all of you, right? Like, this is a point in our lives where we have so much access to so much capital, whether it's financial or social or anything of that nature, where we can utilize it and do whatever we want, whatever we want. And there's gonna be a time not that far from now from whoever is watching this where you won't be able to do that anymore. And it'll be significantly harder for you to maintain these passions that you have, whether they benefit other people or not, simply because you will have to think about yourself and survival. Um, so I encourage everyone, if you are wondering about what there is to do, if you're like sitting at home and you're like, huh, I wish somebody was doing something on this campus. Someone is doing something on this campus. I can speak for myself. I can speak for like 50 of my friends, and that's not hyperbole. There are people doing things on this campus, and all it takes is you to get connected to one person and one issue, and soon the whole world is opened up to you. So do not despair. There are always people moving, and you can move too. Oh, <laughs>